This is a short instructional video on how to perform keratometry, more specifically manual keratometry using the Bosch and Loam. So what is keratometry? A keratometer can be used by eye specialists in measuring the curvature of the interior surface of the cornea, particularly for assessing the extent and axis of astigmatism. In the average eye, keratometry readings, also known as K readings, range within 43 to 44 diopters. Anything less than 40 and more than 47 diopters are considered unusual, therefore should be reconfirmed and retested. Keratometry is the measurement of the anterior corneal curvature. This also determines the power of the cornea. Differences in power across the cornea in both the horizontal and vertical meridians can result in astigmatism. A keratometer can also examine the integrity of the cornea or tear film. So here is the Bosch and Loam keratometer. This is the on and off button. Here is the eyepiece. The occluder. The chin rest adjuster. The chin rest. And the forehead rest. Here is the horizontal measuring drum. The vertical measuring drum. The axis scale. and the locking knob. Hi, Miss Lee. Hi. Would you like to come in with me, please? Yes. Okay, hi, Miss Lee. Thanks for coming in today. My name is Richard, and I'll be your optist. So mm -hmm. I see here that you have a referral relating to your cataract surgery. Yep. So the reason you're here to see me it's just to do some basic initial testing before your surgery. So keratometry is useful in fitting and evaluation of contact lenses, determining the K readings for intraocular lens calculation prior to cataract surgery, determining cause of refractive error, assessing change in corneal shape due to pathology, for example, keratoconus, corneal scarring or post-surgery. It's used as a starting point for refraction for evaluating distortions or irregularities of the cornea. Okay, so now I'm going to set you up on a machine, so could you please follow me and take a seat right here? Yep, sure. We will now discuss the steps required in measuring a keratometry reading. Firstly, set up the equipment. Focus the eyepiece to your refraction. Set the patient nicely upon the chair, making sure they are comfortable. Occlude the eye not being tested. Align the instrument for the patient. You can do this by looking from the side. You will see a tiny bright ring in the centre of the cornea. With the correct position established, the patient will see a reflection of his or her eyes in the tube of the instrument. Instruct the patient to fixate on the reflection of his or her eyes. When setting up the patient, remember to clean the equipment in front of them as it helps reassure their care. Okay, so could you take the glasses off before we start the exam? Thank you. Okay, so just lean forward now, your chin on chin rest. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just line up your pupil with this black line here. Okay, and clear the eye of the occluder. Onto focusing the instrument, looking through the eyepiece, the operator will see the images of the target Maya, which may be blurred. So to clear these images, use the focusing knob. Place the black cross near the centre of the double circle by swiveling the instrument slightly and making fine adjustments of the elevating knob. Lock the instrument with the locking knob and the corneal surfaces are ready to be measured. It is important that the cross in the eyepiece is near the centre of the focusing circle at this point, the optic axis of the instrument will coincide with the visual axis of the patient's eye. At the same time, the image of the patient's eye will be directly before him or her. The focusing doesn't depend solely upon the sharpness of the target image, but is accomplished more precisely by the overlapping of the focusing circles appearing single. It should be noted that with an astigmatic eye, all of the central focusing circles will not appear exactly in focus at the same time. Therefore, for greater accuracy, direct attention to the double plus sign and focus it sharply. 
The focus of the minus sign is disregarded until later. After the axis has been established, turn the horizontal measuring drum and the left hand plus sign will move to the right or left. Move this plus sign until it is exactly superimposed on the plus sign of the central focusing circle. This completes the setting for the near horizontal meridian. The scale of the horizontal measuring drum indicates the actual dioptric power of the cornea in the horizontal meridian. The drum may be left at this position during the rest of the procedure. When the horizontal meridian is found, the minus signs above or below the centre circle will be doubled. They must be made single by rotating the instrument's focusing knob. This brings the vertical meridian into proper focus. To measure the curvature in the vertical meridian, turn the right hand vertical measuring drum until the short minus sign B and the longer minus sign B1 are superimposed. The scale on the right hand drum then indicates the actual dioptric power of the corneal curvature in the vertical or near vertical meridian. Remember that if the cornea is astigmatic, it is impossible to get both principal meridians in focus at the one time. So turn the horizontal measuring drum until the plus signs are barely separated. If the horizontal lines of the plus appear to be continuous and unbroken, the instrument is set at the position of the axis of the astigmatism. If the horizontal lines appear discontinuous, the keratometer is not at the cylinder axis. Hold the rotating grip and rotate the entire tube while looking into the eyepiece. Using a somewhat trial and error approach, a position is reached at which the horizontal lines of the plus signs will appear continuous and unbroken. A further check on the accurate location of the axis may be obtained by throwing the instrument slightly out of focus with the focusing knob. The plus sign of the central focusing circle will be doubled. Okay, Miss Lin, so I need to further light up the machine with your eye. So what I need you to do, I'm going to shine a torch into the machine. It's going to be a bit bright, but just bear with me for a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, all done, quick and easy. You can sit back now. Thank you. So make sure to record the power and meridian of both eyes. Your K1 reading will be the lowest number, which represents the flattest corneal curvature, and your K2 reading will be the highest and steepest. So what do the results mean? So your results mean... Miss Ling had a K1 reading of 45 at 180 degrees, which represents the horizontal meridian, and K2 reading of 46.5 at 90 degrees representing the vertical meridian. This means that her astigmatism is with the rule as her steepest curvature is in the vertical meridian. So we have here with the rule and against the rule. Against the rule has its steepest curvature in the horizontal meridian rather than the vertical. There are other types of astigmatism. They include simple, compound, mixed, irregular and oblique. Simple astigmatism is where one focal line falls on the retina and the other may fall in front or behind the retina. For compound, both focal points lie either in front or behind the retina. Mixed astigmatism is where one focal point lies behind the retina and the other lies in front of the retina. Irregular is where the flat and steep axes aren't at right angles and oblique occurs along the 45 degree or 135 degree meridians. In manual keratometry such as the Bosch and Loam, it provides a clear understanding of the integrity of the pre-corneal tear film and our dynamic view of the surface of the cornea. It also gives direct visualisation of the reflections generated by the tear film. You can recognise areas of corneal surface irregularity or compromise. If the tear film is oily, disrupted or the cornea has subtle dystrophy or degeneration, it will be reflected in the quality of the measurements. So make sure that the keratometer is calibrated and the eyepiece is focused for the individual operator. Ensure the machine has been calibrated before use ensuring the accuracy of K readings. Be sure that the patient is comfortable and appropriately positioned. Preform testing before any drops are instilled or any other testing conducted. Verify that the measurements are accurate. You can do this by having another person double checking or by using a different type of equipment such as an automated keratometer. Do not be afraid of repeat testing. That was good! <laughs> this is so 
Sorry, Walker. My name's Richard, and I'll be your boss. <laughs>